On today's podcast, we're talking with Possibility Mindset Coach Ken Hanneman. Positive Mindset is what we're all about here. So uh, get ready, take your notes out, your tablet, whatever you use to take notes, because it's going to be an awesome show. Because the Frame of Mind Inc. podcast starts right about now. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Frame of Mind Inc. podcast. This is your boy, Sambawi Nibai Jr., a.k.a. TK, and uh, got an interview today, riding solo. My co-host, uh, Omar Williams, uh, is taking a break today, but I hope he'll be back next week. And um, today's an awesome day, another great Wednesday. And uh, sometimes when I do these interviews, I'm, I'm, I'm solo, so I kind of like get lost in translation, like, oh, what should I say when I intro? But you know what? It's what we do. It's how we get down. So before we do anything, let's get these in and out the way. We got our affirmation Wednesdays that we always do. We see our affirmations get in and out the way. So if you got it memorized or if you got it written down or whatever you want to do, let's get these in and out the way and get our day going and moving. And whatever day it is for you, if you're getting the replay video wise, it's affirmation that day. If you're getting the replay uh, via uh, Apple or Spotify or whatever you listen to us on, it's affirmation that day as well or night, or evening, or afternoon, whatever time you're getting it. Are you ready? Let's go. Today will be a good day. Today will be a great day. Today will be an amazing day. Today will be an awesome day. Today will be a phenomenal day. Today will be stress-free. Today will be a stress-less day. Today, I will overcome all barriers that want to block my progress. Today, all circumstances, issues, and situations will line up and work in my favor. And today, all things will line up for my good. Today, I will become better than who and what I was yesterday. I am a go-getter. I am victorious. I am triumphant. I am an overcomer. I never lose. I either win or I learn. I take authority over this day. I dominate this day. I will conquer this day. And everything I have spoken into this day will happen as I have affirmed because I am more than a conqueror. Let's get it started. So well, today we have a special guest, and I'm going to read his bio real quick and introduce him to the show, and we're going to get things popping and going because we like to jump right in and get things started and uh, not waste no time. So today I have uh, Ken Hanneman, who is an executive leader in the restaurant space and is responsible for over 700 plus restaurants. He is also an author, a mindset coach, and host of the Undergraduated Living and Learning Podcast. Having come from little to nothing in his life and achieving abundance and success, he has discovered the power and mindset and belief that led him to this point. He's taught these lessons in his professional career through people development, learning, and growth uh, facilitations and positions. Teaching and developing others is what he's done for 24 plus years, and he wishes to bring his life experiences and learnings to as many people as possible so that more can discover how mindset matters, quote, end quote, in their personal and professional lives. He also recently released his first book, Undergraduated, Finding Your Way and Dropping Out of Outdated Belief Systems, which became a number one new release within its category. Without any further ado, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the Frame of Mind, Inc. podcast. Ken Hanneman. Kim, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Excited to be here and talk some purposeful conversation with you and the audience around mindset. It's what I love talking about. So ready to have some fun and see where the channels take us. Awesome, man. So mindset's also what we're about here. It's also positive mindset, reinforcement, great outcomes, um, you know, and, and having great conversations, invoking conversations to challenge our attitude and our character. So uh, Ken was an awesome 
guests to have on today. So we're going to jump right in. Uh, the first question, actually, before we even do that, I actually like to just uh, give any more extra background you want to give as far as you know who you are, where you came from, uh, things like that just kind of get an idea of who Ken Hanneman is before we jump into these meaningful questions that you're going to blow our minds with with answers. <laughs> well, yeah, it's definitely quite the story. So I'll try to give the abbreviated version of it. But um, all my life has been a search for more meaning and seeing how life unfolds for some people, how it works well, how it doesn't work well for others. I'm a person who asks the bigger questions in life, always have. And this idea of ungraduated, it's it's very deep in a tongue in cheek kind of a way, kind of a funny way, but deep in meaning. Uh, I'm a high school dropout and somebody that was told wouldn't make it in life. And I loved school whenever I was younger, but got caught up into a more challenging environment in my high school years and made some bad mistakes, some choices of my own that resulted in having to repeat my senior year and having turned 18 years old and not liking my environment. I decided to get out of it and drove a thousand miles away from my hometown, Pittsburgh, dropped out of high school, got my GED and pursued a life in leadership in the restaurant business. And people of course were challenging me saying, why would you be throwing your life away to go work in the restaurant business? And I was determined to not be a statistic. I wanted to to make it in life. I have a life that is great now, but was a big struggle early on from having very little to having now a lot of abundance that I'm very thankful for. So I want to give back to people. I want to have, have people either that are in the restaurant business now who don't see it as a career with a lot of opportunity to see what they can have with the proper mindset, but also just help people realize how I believe life works. I've studied 25 years now, probably this mindset space and can correlate it back to thoughts becoming your reality, your perceptions becoming reality, how you frame up your belief systems, those that are placed on you, if they're limiting you, how to remove them. So it's all of those things. And yeah, it's culminated now to a place where I want to decide what's next. It would either be COO of this restaurant company, this large QSR chain, uh, or branching off into my own personal brand. And I'm going to allow the uh, future to decide what's meant. But while I am here now, I want to stay purposeful in all that I do. So be that in the corporate restaurant space, I teach people, I help develop people. And now in this personal brand of ungraduated living and learning, that coaching and mindset space is a passion of mine too. So I'm kind of in between two places right now. But loving where I'm at. So again, thanks for having me on the show, and you know, we'll see where the channels take us. Yeah. So let's stay within that vein of the restaurant business real quick, because I've always been interested in like you know having a restaurant and and doing you know for me personally, it's more about owning it and not running it. That's yeah. kind of how my idea came about a bit doing it. But let's talk about that because a lot of people look at the restaurant business. And especially when it comes to cooks. And I know for me, I know a few people who are cooks or chefs and they work all the time, all the time they're working. But the thing is that they love what they do. And that's a passion of theirs to do that. Uh, as far as you uh, coaching or, or helping people in that business, what are some of the things that you do when you're helping people in the restaurant industry? First things first, that's never probably thought of by a lot of other leaders and in, in the corporate space is really getting down to the level of what drives people. I think every corporate leader probably says, oh, people first. Not a lot of places, not a lot of leaders actually back that up. They may say it, they may actually mean it whenever they say it, but ultimately it comes down to the proper action that you take. What's in it for them? Why are they even there in the first place? So I think for myself, it always begins with, what are your goals? Why are you here? And it saddens me a lot of times to hear people say, whether they're teenagers or middle-aged folks or retirees, oh, I'm just here because it's you know what I have to do. I have no other choices to make money. And I have to always find them different channels to say, well, depending on your goals, let's talk about smart goals and what do you want to accomplish? Where do you want to see your career take you? How can we help you? If you're not going to be with us for the whole entire time, then let's at least have you leave us in a better place than when we first found you. So it's about connecting at a very real ground level with that individual on what their goals are and how we can help them achieve them. I think, again, people, they do work hard in this business. There's no question. I've been in it since I was 17 and now I'm 41. 
I've worked my way up to this point, kind of self-made, if you want to call it that. So there is hard work. But as you work up that ladder, as you create good people around you, as you develop people, that working hard doesn't have to always be a continued narrative in this space. So yes, entry levels, hard work. Work your way up into management, become a better leader, help others grow along with you. And the job's not that difficult. And there can be a lot of prosperity in restaurant ownership, management. I don't own restaurants. I just lead them at a high level, but it didn't always start off that way. So I love telling the story, connecting with people, asking them why they're here and watching their eyes grow wide whenever they can find out what they can truly have in this business. And it's definitely not a business most people wake up in and say, yeah, I'm going to go run restaurants for the rest of my life. <laughs> I know yeah. I didn't, but it's where I find myself at now. Yeah, I think that's interesting because you talked about how you want to have them leave you in a better place than where they came. And a lot of times you get into a workspace and they're trying to hold on to people and keep people there and they're not happy. And they're like, OK, you're holding on to someone who doesn't want to be here, obviously. I'm like, what can you do to help them make a transition? And I think what you do is awesome because you help them see the bright side of being there. And the bride said, saying, OK, you're here for a period of time. What's the goal after this? Because now you have to have some sort of roadmap rather than just saying, oh, I'm going to go to the next job and see what happens there. It's like now you're just becoming a job hopper with no goals, no aspirations. You're just trying to make money. And you are, but you're also not because <laughs> there's no there's no vision. So I, I, I commend you on that as well. So let's jump into ungraduated because I was wrapping my head around it. I'm like, all right. I, I get the word, but I'm like, where did it come from? What does it mean for him? And I know you mentioned that you you were a high school dropout, but tell us what ungraduated as far as, you know, your podcast and, and the word uh, means to you and your journey and how you're teaching people um, in their journeys of life. Yeah. Well, for starters, it is a made up word. Yes. Ungraduated. And it hit me as kind of like a a lightning bolt one day. I was in my basement gym working out about two years ago, middle of COVID and thinking, how can I launch a personal brand and really speak to my passions and have the brand be a good, I guess, depiction of what it stands for. So ungraduated hit me as this, as this brand. I asked my wife, Hey, does it fit me and what the message needs to be? And it's about removing yourself of pre-programmed beliefs. It's yes, a tongue in cheek word for me being a high school dropout and not going through life in the normal laid out fashions that society says you have to do. Graduate high school, go to college, get a house, get married, have kids. Not necessarily in that order for most people, but I didn't follow that entire plan whatsoever. I was very different in how I got to my level of success. So it has to do with that whole piece of it. But it's very much about removing yourself of limiting life beliefs, meaning that whose life are you living? A lot of times it's parents with good intentions. I'm not saying that all advice from parents is bad, but parents tend to put their own belief systems on their children. Then, of course, you have friends, society, education, governments, religions. Not that all that stuff's bad. You take what's good, but you have to ask yourself, Whose story are you living? What version of reality do you believe? And I believe that we have to step back and remove ourselves of the limiting life beliefs that have been placed upon us. And I'm sorry to say this, but in a large part of this world that we live in, there are a lot of limiting life beliefs. And it's my belief that there aren't a lot of people lining up telling us how to empower ourselves and live with more meaning, happiness, fulfillment, because People like to stay in power. They like to lead and be leaders and stay with more money and control. Mm -hmm. If we had a fully empowered population, there wouldn't be a whole lot of need for leadership. I know it sounds utopian, but the whole ungraduated movement, ungraduated word is removing the bad that's been placed upon you and finding new programs that help you live with more empowerment, more meaning, more purpose. Asking yourself, what is your meaning? Who are you living for? Your life or somebody else's? That's the premise and the basis of what ungraduated really means. That's awesome. That's good. I may have to adopt that one day and be like, you know what? <laughs> ungraduated. And a lot of people don't actually don't even know this about me. I actually, I graduated high school, went to college, but I actually didn't finish college until like 10 years later. Mm -hmm. So you guys, and eventually I'm going to do a podcast where I just talk about my story like it, in totality 
Um, that's a hint, hint, guys. It's just letting you know. All right. <laughs> but uh, let's continue on. Now, you're all about, you know, poss possibility mindset, which I've, I've never seen that phrase before, possibility mindset. But I like it because, you know, we, people always say, oh, that's not possible. But, you know, this a lot of things, if not all things are possible, if you really put your mind to it. I mean, you know, you're not ne necessarily can fly physically, but, you know, you, you can you can soar to new heights in your life. Uh, let's talk about growth, man, growth mindset and a fixed mindset. We did a podcast on this sometime last year, I believe. And I love to hear uh, your points of view on this um, as far as a growth mindset versus a fixed mindset. Yeah, it's it's really ground, groundbreaking work in the mindset space. It's just really two nice ways to frame up. Are you accountable for your learning or are you not accountable for it? Do you look at life happening to you or for you or by you? I think that people that are in a fixed mindset look at life happening to them. Those that are in a growth mindset look at every opportunity as life happening for them, their improvement, their betterment, or even by them. I think by them is the next level up saying, hey, I am the one doing this. It's not happening just for me. It's happening by me. Every choice that we make has an outcome and we have to realize that. So when it comes to the 10% or so that maybe you don't have control of, it's okay to look at it and say, this I had no control of whatsoever. Nobody asked for COVID to come. Nobody asked for a lot of the other world tragedies that occur or even the more lower level, but still important life challenges that happen to us. Nobody wants those things, but it is life. So you learn hey, how can I improve out of this? What lessons are there to be had versus there is no feedback that I want to hear. I am not somebody who's going to make it in life. I am a victim more of a than, than more of a winner. So it comes to this aspect of what side of the coin do you sit on? Are, are you a glass half full person or a glass half empty? And it's probably 50-50 across the world. If you ask most people, you're going to probably get a lot of pessimists and a lot of optimists. I define myself as a cautious optimist, not a blind optimist, but I realize that I'm in control of the outcomes of my life, 90 to 95% of it, from whether it's health goals, weight loss goals, money goals. It's the choices that I make every single day that I'm going to learn from and be accountable for and not look myself in the mirror and blame somebody else for. So growth mindset is just what it states. You are all about growth. You want to continue learning. You ask more questions. You're a lifelong learner. You're a student of life. You're looking for more ways to improve. Then you have the fixed mindset of all feedback is bad. Life's out to get you. Um, you don't really want to grow. You're afraid of growth. You don't want to get outside the comfort zone. And it hurts to really say these things. It's not to attack any one individual. It's just personality characteristics. You can change this stuff. Mm -hmm. But if you're listening and you're someone who's like, yeah, I fit more into this pessimistic side. Just realize you might be in more of a fixed mindset. And I don't think everybody probably always perfectly fits neatly into growth or fixed. Sometimes we slide in and out of them from time to time based off of different life circumstances. So it's important to realize if you want to be in a growth mindset, though, and you're aware of what that means whenever you fall off track and how to pick yourself back up with accountability, look yourself in the mirror and decide what was it that you could have done differently that could have had a different, more, more empowering outcome and then learn from it and move forward positively. So that's in a nutshell, the simplistic way of explaining growth mindset, fixed mindset. So I'll follow that question up with this. You talked about fear, you know, so how does fear cripple people from going from like mediocrity or worse or from mediocrity to extremely successful? How, how does that work? People don't realize what fear really is. Um, it, 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 there is so much that when you think about fear, what's the antithesis of it, right? It's hard to probably pick the direct opposite, but I call it love. Love for yourself, love for others, and not really being fearful of what may be coming in life, loving life, not being afraid of it. So in our base mindset, people have probably heard of the reptilian brain. It's the evolution of the brain and how humankind has evolved consciously with free choice and the ability to be one of the most intelligent beings that we know of on planet earth at, at this time. We're always consciously evolving, but the reptilian brain is a place that 
was the base level of our brain that has a lot of the instinctive reactions inside of it. So whenever a bear jumped out, you intrinsically had this fight or flight response. So fear is intrinsically in us because it's a survival mechanism. But the problem with it today, and you probably know this as well as many of your listeners, for the most part, there still sadly are some people in this world that have to live with fear, unfortunately, real fear. But I'd say 90% of the world does not need that intrinsic function of fight or flight all of the time. Yet we act like it's there with us all of the time. So we respond to stress. We respond to a lot of everyday life scenarios with having to give a speech or having an important date or an important job interview. And instead of having normal reactions, that fear component is still there. And it's really just a survival mechanism. What we have to learn to do is to lean in with the love of the experience, saying that no matter what comes, I'm going to put my best foot forward and learn from the situation that's at hand. So this idea of fear being limiting is then what keeps us from expanding into you know, more opportunity. There's this idea of comfort that we all are striving for. And what I always teach and talk about is that if you feel fear in any one aspect of your life, it's probably a good indicator of somewhere you want to lean more into and pay more attention around. Whether it's just fear of spiders, fear of heights, those kinds of things are cues to try to figure out, well, why do you have this fear? Or if it's more everyday things, spend more time. Don't run from those things. I'm not saying you go conquer each and every one of them one by one. Mm -hmm. Realize that fear is a control mechanism at this point in our lives. It was there to serve a purpose. It still sometimes is necessary, but for the most part, we allow fear to control us and we don't move out of our comfort zones. And if we don't move out of the comfort zones, then we don't learn. This thing called life is meant to make us uncomfortable. What would it be if we were always here all the time, just comfortable? Sounds nice in theory, but we would never be growing, never be learning. So fear is what shackles us. And we have to learn to lean into it and get uncomfortable. When we get uncomfortable, we grow. And that's where real opportunity comes from. That's good stuff, man. I, I was um, a movie I saw a while back. And I can't remember the name of it where, it was actually it was a cartoon movie and it was people had to move from earth into this ship because earth was being destroyed and what happened was uh there was a lot of uh machines that kept doing things for everyone and so everyone went from doing things for themselves to letting the machines do it for them and over time people physically were growing but their minds were not and so what happened was is that they started gaining weight they were getting lazier people weren't exercising they weren't moving around is that the machines started carrying people around the uh, uh, and that to me is an example of well if you're if you're not growing i'm like you're kind of you get stagnated or if you're not constantly you know feeding yourself you know new information new knowledge you know you you get to a point where you might have a fixed mindset because you're not growing your mind I mean, it's meant to be grown and expanded not no physically. I mean, your brain only, only grows so big, but you're expanding the mind. You're expanding your parameters to to really look at things in a much different way. Uh, one last question before we go to break: um, the law of attraction. Now, I've heard this a million times over, and one of the 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 greatest books that I've read outside for me personally, outside of of the Bible, was uh, the Power of the Subconscious Mind. It's one of the greatest books that I've ever read. And there's other books that I've read, but that one there was awesome too. But the law of attraction, what does that mean to you? And do you define it differently outside of what we've heard? Or is it kind of the same definition for you? And how does that look for you when it comes to mindset? And and uh, even as, a, as a, opposed to your term ungraduated? Yeah. So great question. Thanks for asking it. I think that there are so many different <laughs> places I could go with that, but let me start it off with, I think there are really good ancient history books from the Bible and many other great teachers of time, Jesus Christ being one and many others uh, like him who have been trying to tell humankind for a long time, the answers are within you to reach the kingdom of, of heaven. Thou must turn within one of the most famously quoted 
uh, phrases that Jesus says in the Bible. And many other books throughout time are trying to tell us in allegorical, metaphorical, or even matter of fact, very practical ways that the answer to our happiness is to turn within and do the inner work and find out what's happening within our own will, our own consciousness. So the best way that I can describe it, at least in 2022 here, that I think makes sense for everybody with law of attraction is that thoughts are things. You may not be able to see thoughts, but thoughts are energy. And this is proven because you can see in science now today that subatomic particles and things that make up matter, and I don't want to get all scientific uh, with scientific jargon on people here, but when you watch particles and atoms and neutrons and electrons interact whenever there's no thought, no human conscious thought, they behave differently. And this is being proven in physics and science today. Whenever you observe these particles, they behave differently. So they actually behave the same way thousands of miles apart. So whenever you interact consciously with thought, it has a different impact. Now, guess what? Our bodies are made of all of these things. We have atoms and particles and neutrons and electrons inside of our physical matter. And I believe through my study in science teaching this, this as well too, that thoughts are controlled by consciousness. So you mentioned the term subconscious thought. That's like the background of your computer. It's what makes things work. It's the behind the scenes things that make up programming. So the software to the hardware, our hardware is the mind and the body. The software is the programming behind it that happens autonomously, kind of like breathing and digestion. Thankfully, those things happen. Well, subconsciously, you've got things happening too, and they come from your belief systems. They come from how you were raised, how you view the world. Is it out to get you or is it there to help you? And this stuff is happening all the time underneath the surface that causes you to make decisions and form beliefs that you do. So law of attraction is simply this. How are you attuning yourself, right? Are you in harmony with the greater good of the universe? Are you in harmony with the divine? Are you in harmony with right and goodness versus dark and evil? Are you more of a life's happening for you or life is against you. So when you attune the frequency, it's what you get more of. This energy that's out there that's in the universe that permeates the subconscious, it's coming to you all the time. You may think you're making conscious choices, which oftentimes we do, but again, a lot of times we don't. So it's addressing the programming, the mindset of what do you want more of in life? And if you attune yourself to what you want more of, Versus always saying, I don't want these things. I don't want to be unhappy. I don't want to be poor. I don't want to be without. When you focus on those things, the irony of law of attraction is it's very matter of fact. It's almost like this divine energy source that I believe is a God. Some call the divine, your higher self source, whatever it is, gave us these tools and many different teachers of times past have been trying to tell us how things work and we just haven't quite seen it and now i think this is my opinion i think that the marriage perhaps of science and religion is what we need to understand how this stuff really works and law of attraction is just a fancier or i should say simpler way of trying to say what you think you get it doesn't happen overnight but it does come into your life through which every thought that you make think and choose to do throughout each day week month and year does dictate your outcome. So it's that underlying subconscious programming that's there on top of the very conscious, yes, I am this. Yes, I am that. I loved your affirmations when you were starting off the show. The two most powerful words in the English language, I am. I am. Because what comes after, you're affirming into its existence, subconsciously or consciously. You heard it, folks. I'm not the only one that says that, right? <laughs> I am, but two Truth. powerful words, man. They are they are very powerful. What it comes after it, it shapes it shapes who you are. It shapes your world. So awesome stuff. We'll take a quick break. Hope you guys are taking notes because uh, Ken is dropping fire on you guys. All right, uh, take a quick break. Come right back. When we come back, we're going to uh, ask Ken about his book that he wrote as well, and we're also going to ask him you know, some more things about. Um, our consciousness. So we just dabbed into a little bit of subconscious. Now we're going to talk a little, a little more about conscious. I'm not going to think it's over here about the conscious mind 
and uh, and then allow Ken to kind of uh, let us know where we can reach him at, and uh, just give us a last word as we go into the second half of this. Don't go anywhere, guys. Friend of Mine Podcast will be right back. Are you looking for an apparel company that's positive, uplifting, and truly cares about you? Then look no further. Frame of Mind, Inc., an apparel brand company, impresses on individuals to think positive thoughts, say positive things, and do positive deeds. Get positive apparel, such as t-shirts, hoodies, and wristbands for children, teens, and adults in various colors and sizes. Customized services include logo and t-shirt design, screen printing, and embroidery for individuals, families, schools, profit, and nonprofit organizations. You can reach Frame of Mind, Inc. at 302-689-3499 or visit their website at www.frameofmindinc.com. Frame of Mind, Inc. Think it. Speak it. Achieve it. All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Before we left, we were talking with Ken Hanneman about uh, his word, ungraduated. We talked about the law of attraction and uh, some things in our subconscious mind, as well as growth mindset versus fixed mindset and uh, a bunch of other knowledge he dropped on us. So hopefully, again, you're taking notes, whether it's electronically, uh, writing them down. Uh, don't try to memorize this stuff. It's not going to work. All right, write it down, put it somewhere. Uh, re- re- listen to the replays and all that stuff because uh, we really appreciate you guys listening and tuning in to us. And we try to bring you guys, you know, people in the industry who have, uh, who are leaders and who are dropping knowledge on people to help them, be, you know, better their lives as well. Right now, we're going to get into uh, your book that you wrote, which uh, looks like Stan says you wrote the book of the ungraduated, finding your way and dropping out of outdated belief systems. Um, first of all, why'd you write the book? And then second of all, what was the, the, the purpose behind it? I guess, outside of your, your, your own world, what was the, the mission behind writing the book you wrote? Yeah, I appreciate that question again. And it's kind of funny because I could easily say, well, I didn't think I'd write a book, but somewhere well beyond, uh, this present time I thought of, it would be pretty cool one day to write a book. I had no idea that it would be this book. But why I wrote the book, simply this. I've been studying and seeking answers that I believe for myself are reaffirming truths. I always teach that truth comes from experiences. Otherwise, it's hearsay. It could be theories, hypothesis. But until you experience it, it can't be your truth. So my truth has been that I have been studying and finding answers to what makes sense to me, that I hope can plant a few seeds for other people. It doesn't need to be always the way that it works for me. But my goal was to plant some seeds and hoping that anybody who picks this up, listens to the audio book, reads it on Kindle, hard copy, soft copy, whatever form that they get, that it gives them a little bit of, of a rabbit trail to go down this, that hopefully piques their interest into more self-discovery and possibilities. I've been a lifelong learner since probably my early 20s, always asking why and trying to take my spare time in life and using it to my advantage. So finally, I said, it's time to take action. I believe that part of the law of attraction we were talking about earlier is that whenever you take action, it affirms to this higher source, universal principle of life that you get more whenever you give back and you put things out into existence through which you have passions of. And a lot of the book, yeah, it talks about belief systems and mindset, but it is also about finding your purpose and finding your reason for being. And I'll talk through just a quick overview of the book here in just a moment, but I believed it was time to take action. I think it's great to learn and not everybody probably is going to write a book, but for me, it was about putting it out there and sharing what I hope can help other people as this stuff has helped me become more happy, more empowered more free spirited, enjoying life every day. You look around and you see all the chaos and challenges and all the noise of of what people I think in certain places of higher power want us to be in chaos and confused by. We don't need to buy into all that stuff. We need to take control of our own lives. So the book really starts off with the first section being seeing is believing and finding your blind spots. And I go through, I think, I hope in a practical non 
too scientific way of how life works from a scientific proven aspect of how thoughts are energy and these principles of natural law, I call them, being the first one, that's the principle of mentalism. That's that all things begin with thought. Thought is the, it's the jux, it's the jumping off point. It's the, it's the beginning of all things. Everything that we do individually begins with thought. And then of course, you've got cause and effect and you've got rhythms of life and you've got vibrations. Are you on a good vibe or a bad vibe? And all this stuff bubbles up to understanding what's happening behind the scenes. A lot of things that ancient history teachers have been saying, a lot of religious aspects uh, are tied into the book. I am not a religious person. I am spiritual. I practice my own spirituality that is very much in a higher power and uh, not to turn anybody off by the word religion. I think that it plays a very important part in our lives, but it too is can be confusing. And this one's out there and they say this one's right and that one's right. So again, it's just asking yourself, what is your belief? Explore your belief. And hopefully this reaffirms or at least challenges some people to say, what is happening at the underlying levels of life? And as we work through these principles and natural laws of life and understanding how thoughts become things, it builds into purpose, reason for being. What do you do with this? How can you take the information and put it into practical use? How do you test these quote unquote theories of thought and meditation and intention and then watch things in your life actually occur right before your very eyes? And you got to quit with the word coincidences. I don't believe in coincidences. Mm -hmm. I always say that there is a point in life when enough coincidences occur to where it's mathematically improbable to continue to be coincidences. Either you're being blessed or you're creating your own reality through your own thoughts. And I got some examples of what's happened to me in my own life and where I got this knowledge from and how I've learned these things and what you can do as the reader to try each chapter finishes with some real use cases to put in your, to, to try to put your learning into practicality. And then it kind of concludes with this, okay, now what do you want to do with this? What's your reason for being? What's your purpose? In a perfect world, there's a part of the book that I talk about called Ikigai. It's a Japanese term that is used to define the perfect balance of life. And in Eastern philosophy, it was, hey, what was your one reason for being? Could be to feed your family, take care of the farm, whatever got you out of bed every day. It's been westernized by a lot of thought leaders as what does the world need or community need around you? What are you good at? What are you, what can you do that you're good at to be paid for? And all of those things come into balance in a perfect world. That's your vocation. How do you find a way to go get paid for what the need is, what you're good at, what you love, and you can earn a living doing it. So this term Ikigai helps balance that no matter where you're at in life, even if you like your job, but it's not enough money, or if you hate your job and it's tons of money, <laughs> there's people in all different parts of this thing we call life that they're trying to find that happy balance, that quadrant, if you will, of you love it, it's a need, you're good at it, and you're being paid for it. I'm close to that now. You know, I still have corporate restaurant world experience leading at a high level, but I love the teaching aspect of it or else I wouldn't keep doing it. Now I'm venturing off into writing books and speaking and podcasting. And I love this, not making tons of money doing this right now mm -hmm. comes from the other side of, uh, of my corporate work. But if I do transition into this full time, believe me, it will be something that I make a living off of and that I truly love. And I think a world need is there and I'm pretty good at it. It's my life passion. So it's this, again, idea of ungraduate from the program, the typical, this is the way life is supposed to be, unless that works for you. And again, I'm not saying that the current model of go to high school and graduate and college and car and kids and happy ever after is a bad thing. For some people, it works perfectly. But you ask the majority of people out there if they're happy and they say no, a lot of reasons because of the materialistic aspect, this seeking for more stuff, keeping up with the Joneses. And I'm all for have enough, have enough, but keep that frame of reference good enough to realize that you're going to get more stuff if you want it by fulfilling a higher calling, by giving back, by having an actual true purpose. 
it doesn't have to be a life changing world kind of stage thing. It's what fills your cup. Go find more ways to do that and get paid doing it to have a better, happy, successful life. And the book is very much about guiding people from beginning to practicality to end point of what that purpose can look like and how you live with more empowerment on your terms, not by what others around you, parents, governments, leaders, schools, whoever else. A lot of it is with good intention, but not all of it is for you. You got to define it for yourself. That's a mouthful of advice right there. And it, it was leading me up to my next question. You might have already answered it already, but even if you can even put more clarity into it, how does one really find purpose? You know, we, we talked about, you know, you can make more money, but then not be happy with what you're doing, or you cannot make enough, but love what you're doing. And you're looking at all these different variables, but how does one really find purpose in life to, to bring themselves into a uh, fulfillment? Well, let me first start with, I know that not everybody, unfortunately, you know, there's about 8 billion people in this place we call earth living here right now. Not all 8 billion have the right state of mind or structure around them. You have to have some base essentials met first. You can't be thinking purpose. For example, if you can't put food on the table, your purpose in that moment is to put food on the table. Or if you don't have a roof over your head, your purpose is to find a roof over your head. But for the majority of people in 2022, help is out there if you need it. Guidance is out there if you need it. And if you can get to a base level where you have a safe place to stay, where you have enough food, your life's not in jeopardy, you can begin to think of higher level affirming places of life. So I, in the book, I tie this back to Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And it comes through reaching self-actualization. You can't reach self-actualization until you have some base essentials of life. So again, unfortunately, not everybody yet. But it's sad because we should be able, in my opinion, to have everybody um, outside of some unfortunate mental challenges that some folks may have, which need to be cared for. But the majority of folks have this ability to reach self-actualization. And once you have enough and it's not more materialistic things. That's whenever I think real purpose comes in the be. And it begins with besides your family. And it's quite okay, right? It's quite okay if your purpose is to provide for your family, to raise great children, to care for your spouse or significant other. That can be a purpose. But for a lot of people, it's what else? You know, eventually the children grow up and you've done your part in helping raise them. So what could then you? Uh, by yourself or with your spouse or significant other do, that is going to be fulfilling. So you have to then ask yourself, what, I don't know, what generates excitement for you? What are you curious about? Also, what are you really good at? And I think people are so hard on themselves because when they're asked, hey, what are you good at? What normally happens is they want to rattle off the 10 things that they're not good at. It's so hard to say, hey, I'm pretty good at this. So if you're struggling with what could you do with more purpose, Ask some people, hey, what do you see me as, as far as benefits? You know, what do you think I'm good at? And what are some things that you appreciate about me? And then, you know, allow the accolades to come. Take down the defensive walls and just listen to what people appreciate about you. If you don't already know this yourself, some people may already know this themselves, but if you're not sure, that can be one way to, get, to try to guide you to more purpose. Again, outside of family. Family is a great one, but if you're looking for other life impact, community type things, environmental type things, spirituality, it could go down any vast array. It could just be a hobby that turns into a side hustle that then all of a sudden turns into a business. You got to be very open, I think. And I would also advocate that you put out the intention. Some, some people call it prayer. Some people call it meditation. I like to say I put out the intention of guidance and then paying attention to what life puts in front of me. And it's miraculous whenever you put out the intention of wanting more information, wanting more opportunity. Again, we like to say it's coincidental, but then that purpose-driven life can be put right in front of you. We then have the free will choice of whether we act upon it or not. So a lot of times people pray or they put out the intention and they're saying, oh man, nothing's happening. Well, you may not be paying attention to all the people that are in front of you and it takes action. I don't think that this thing called life, again, that we're here to just have things put in front of us. Mm -hmm. We're here to take action. Uh, otherwise, what 
again, would be the point. If we don't have the opportunity to grow, learn, and make our own choices, if, if everything was handed to us, it'd be too easy. And that's why it's not that way. So you got to find what you're passionate about. I've always been somebody who just has these bigger, greater questions of life. And as I've figured things out and have this great life now, that wasn't always the way that it is. My life passion has turned into, for those who want it, because not everybody's ready for this, how do I help others see things in a way that helps them? Not the way that it was for me, just some seeds to help them go down their own channels of self-discovery, ask the right questions, lead them to more purpose and more fulfillment. Again, if you're framing it up as money, as money first, yes, we all need money, but money is not everything. Money comes once you're doing something you love. It becomes currency for what you're good at and how you're serving others. Money then comes. If you go out go out seeking that money first, that's where people get tripped up. They get stuck sideways and things go awry. That is beautiful information. Uh, it's, it sounds like to me you're talking about servanthood to a large degree, you know, yeah, serving absolutely. people, serving people. And that's that's a powerful thing. You know, I, I love how, how you said that. Last two minutes before we go, you you said a lot today. And um, I'm, I'm sure our, our listeners are writing things down and they're taking notes and they're probably saying someone so needs to hear this. Well, how about you share this episode with that so and so? How about that? <laughs> you know, but Kim, before you go, uh, just in general, just drop some last two minute knowledge on our listeners. Just in general, like the last thing you want to leave with them before you go that they say, you know what? I might not have heard anything else, but I heard that. Like, what would you want to say to them? I would simply state this. We are not insignificant, simple, little me humans that we've been made to believe. I think that we are connected to a higher source, a higher level of intelligence that this universe is masterfully created in front of us. It doesn't have to be religious. It doesn't have to be spiritual. Just realize that life is showing me, and hopefully many of you who are listening, it's right there in front of you. We are powerful individual creators of our own realities and we don't even realize it we're sometimes asleep at the wheel imagine if we woke up and took full control over what we want in life and what we didn't want in life life's still going to throw us curveballs and that's that's why i think we chose to come here that's why i think we're here in this planet experimenting with this game we call life it's to try to elevate consciousness to become better leaders husbands spouses better humans so don't always look externally, meaning that there is a connection that you can have externally to a source, to a, to a more powerful divine being than yourself. But this need to look outside always instead of turning within and watching your thoughts become the watcher of your thoughts. And if you actually stop and catch yourself thinking and then look at your life, you're going to see it. It's right there. You're creating it through your own mindset. You are a powerful human being. Don't let anybody else let you believe otherwise. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Ken Hanneman dropping knowledge on us. Undergraduated is the word of the day. Uh, again, his book, Undergraduated, Finding Your Why and Dropping Out of Outdated Belief Systems. Before you go, Ken, just let everyone know where they can reach you at, whether it's social media or a website. Let everyone know where they can reach you and where they can actually purchase the book as well, please. Yeah, sure. It's very easy. You can go to ungraduated.com. It's U-N-G-R-A-D-U-A-T-E-D. -E yes, made up word. Just take graduated, put U-N on the front of it. The uh, domain was available, so it was just meant to be. It's not often you come up with a name and you're like, GoDaddy.com or wherever you go for a domain, and it's sure as heck there. So ungraduated.com has my socials, has the book information, has a blog on it. It's uh, There's a community aspect that I have going on, too, that people can sign up for free. There's a free download of the audio book on the website. You can check it out. I'm here to try to empower people to find out more about what it is that makes life special for them, and that's why I exist. So ungraduated.com best place to go all right and also for those of you who are listening and may not have be able to write all this down we'll have all of this in the notes as well so we'll have his social media handles and website and all that stuff and uh ken thank you again we, we spent some time trying to get this together and finally our schedules were able to make it happen so thank you so much i appreciate you uh thanks for stopping by and uh, for all of you out there who are listening uh thanks for listening to another episode of the favorite mining podcast 
uh, continue to think it, speak it, and achieve it. And until next time, I holla. Thank you for joining the Frame of Mind Inc. podcast. And as always here at Frame of Mind Inc., think positive thoughts, say positive things, and do positive deeds. As our tagline says, think it, speak it, achieve it. See you next time. Don't forget to check us out on the web at www.frameofmindinc.com where you can browse our online apparel store, listen to some of our original music and production services, as well as view our videos and projects we've done for our clients and customers.